Today is Tuesday, July 16th, 2024. Damien, what's on your mind? What's on my mind is that nothing works. Nothing works, which paradoxically makes us more frustrated that nothing works. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Last week, we interviewed Marie Abel, who's the head of the Yale Immigration Law Clinic. And we talked to her about this uh, case that she makes the that she makes the argument is a seminal case in both immigration and civil rights law, Cam Campo Chavez versus Garland. It's a case from the this current term or this just past term of the Supreme Court. It was published in June. And on its face, the case is straightforward. Indeed, I would go so far as to say if you just heard the base holding, mm -hmm. the average American would go, oh, that makes sense. Of which I am one, would say, no big deal. No big deal. How would you summarize the holding? I would summarize the holding this way. If somebody receives a notice to appear in court and there's no date given to appear, it is their responsibility, the onus is on the person who received that notice to appear notification to find out when that date is. And should any follow-up dates be sent, it's in, it's the onus is on the person getting, the recipient of that NTA. Right, and I, I hear that and I think that's accurate and I, and I go, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? What's the catch? It makes sense if you imagine that we have a functioning rational system which can not only properly record initial addresses of where immigrants will be living or anybody will be living, but can also efficiently, effectively, accurately update those addresses through something like an online address update service. And then even when those addresses are updated in database A, make sure that databases B, C, D, and E, which might also exist somewhere in the back rooms of government, are also updated. So that when database E sends out an updated notice for a new court date, it reflects the address change in database A. But the problem is that nothing works. But why? The only reason that lawyers like me exist and will continue to exist and will continue to be called cockroaches is because we live in the innards, in the reality of bureaucratic systems that don't work, similar to cockroaches and dirty kitchens. Horrible right. analogy. Horrible, that's but why, accurate. That's why we wear cologne. Here's an example. Okay, so that, that, that was, that was you'll, you'll see the discussion of Campus Chavez. Check out the podcast. It should be dropping right around when this video is dropping. It's, it takes about a week to edit. Shout out uh, to Santiago, who's back. Santiago, please keep this in, our editor. And shout out to the awesome work of Keith Higgins, who um, is our producer behind camera, the voice you hear. I'm really excited. So do check out that new 10 Billion People podcast. Uh, I believe it's episode eight or nine or whatever. Uh, Eli McDonald, we miss you. But uh, uh, I'm hoping that this uh, new edition of the show will, will have uh, lasting power. Okay, so here's a little story. Okay. Um, I was talking to last week, uh, uh, one of my, clients who had contracted me to create an extension on an H2E visa for a nanny, that nanny being in a country that has a notoriously difficult consulate. We got the extension through the USCIS and everything was good. They decided to give the nanny vacation and the vacation meant that the nanny was going to go back to her home country. Spoke to an attorney I work with who specializes in that consulate, said that's a bad idea because no matter what, you're gonna be depending on a consular officer, even if interview waivers exist, to approve the application. They should approve. Department of State has put out a notice from December 2023 saying that these types of cases where you have a renewed H2B visa should be granted a waiver. She's been approved before, her immigration history is clean, but I'm telling you right now, none of that matters because there's still a possibility they have to go in front of a consulate officer and a consulate officer is beholden to precisely no one but other consulate officers. Because despite the trappings that you might see on a web page or in a promulgated missive that comes into your email because you've signed up for updates, agency updates, or because of what you might have read in a book that was compiled just this year to give you the latest insider knowledge on how these bureaucracies work, nothing actually works and nothing matters but local conditions. The Greeks had a word for this. Odysseus was 
was uh, in, in, in many ways is remembered as um, a hero and a trickster because of this. It's mess. There's theoretical knowledge. So there's a th theoretical knowledge of when to farm, when to plant seeds, how big uh, you know your crop should be to feed X number of people in a village. But a farmer can't depend on theoretical knowledge. A farmer has to have metis, which is localized, real life knowledge of his fields. What he must do to gain a certain crop in his field that faces the east, that gets regular rains, that might get a northeasterly wind that brings sand and covers his crops and necessitates a replanting is very different than a farmer whose crop is on the other side of the mountain, faces west, gets fewer rains, gets a different type of wind, perhaps colder. That's why if you know anything about wines, which I don't, but I'm told, <laughs> It matters on what side of a hill a vineyard might be located because it's two different types of soil. It's 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 easily to mock that sort of knowledge as uh, pretentious when it comes to wine, but in fact, the life of a lawyer who inevitably, if they stick around long enough, ends up specializing is really the life of a farmer. Specializing just means that you start sticking to fewer and fewer fields. Everything else that you see online about how things are supposed to work, in other words, are that theoretical knowledge. What actually happens on the ground is the knowledge that you need to get something done. When a system works, the theoretical knowledge, those signposts, they are instructive as of what you need to do when you actually get on the ground. You can depend on them. You can follow them. You can have success with them and change things up and experiment within you know, the bounds of uh, some sort of reasonable space, right? You, you, you'll do a reasonable amount of tweaking to make it work just so. But when a system is broken, when it's broken, theoretical knowledge is not a guide. In fact, it can become an impediment. So we take this nanny candidate, we get the interview waiver just like the Department of State says she should get. We get an interview waiver uh, paper and uh, that interview paper has certain things that she should send. We send that to the nanny. She knows she needs to go into this physical office in her home country to send the documents that are being requested to send in so that interview waiver can be completed. That office, which is an official office of the government uh, that works with the US consulate, has a different set of instructions for what should be sent. So she sends in documents according to that different set of instructions, which is missing a paper. Fine. Packet comes back. She adds that missing paper that apparently the consulate wants, but its office wasn't told is needed. And in fact, was told not to send in anything that's not on whatever list they had, right? So database A wasn't working with database B. Send that in, it's accepted. They say you have to come in for an interview now. She goes to an interview. There's nine other people that are waiting for, uh, for an interview at the same time. All 10 people get rejected. She's questioned about an old visa she had, a tourist visa where she came in as a domestic worker perfectly legally, worked perfectly legally as a domestic worker, and is rejected. And now the client is in a panic because they're not gonna have their, nina, their uh, nanny. None of this is what's supposed to happen according to what's written. And in fact, all of the complications, not only is, is, is the outline doesn't reflect what's, what's the reality on the ground, the reality on the ground so much conflicted, right? Between different steps. Send this paper, don't send this paper. I know this says to send this, but we're not allowed to send this if it's not on our official list. You send in the official list, database A says the official list is no good and only then can you send. Neither the guidelines nor what's happening on the ground coordinate with each other. They don't correspond to each other. There's no coherent reality. And so it totally comes down to some person doesn't understand anything of what's you've had to go through as an applicant, as an employer, as an employee. And they make a decision based on an experience, based on having a bad day, based on being tired to deny a visa that leads to giant complications for you in your personal life. That's what a non-working system looks like. So going back to that conversation with Marine last week, when you are evaluating how much a law, how much a court decision, how much an executive order, how much an election is going to shape your life. You can't do what economists do or public policy wants. You can't assume a rational, orderly, 
working system. That's not the world you live in. That's not the world we live in anymore, if we ever did. You have to assume that whatever is being suggested or mandated is being put atop a world that's imperfect, where the guidelines, at the very least, are out of tune with the metis, with the on the ground reality in the farmer's field. And if you're really smart or cynical, and perhaps a good lawyer should be both, then you should assume that what's on the ground no longer has very much to do at all with what's written in the books. And whatever decisions are being made are too often made on what's written in the books. And so you're layering fantasy atop failure. And what do you end with? A failed fantasy. And what's a failed fantasy? It's a dystopia. A place where nothing works. That's what I'm thinking about.